Mukul Kocher is with us. He's head of institutional sales India with Investec Capital Services Private Limited. Mukul, good to have you back uh, on the show. Thanks very much. Uh, just a quick uh, overall sense on earnings that uh, we've gotten so far. It seems um, from what we've seen, better than expected. I mean, actually, much better than expectations so far. Yeah, yeah, but but you have to remember that uh, you know so far companies reporting include IT. Hmm. Now IT has really been a mixed bag, which is what I would have predicted going into the uh, uh, earnings as well. Hmm. Uh, because uh, the reason is that there's going to be market share shifts within the industry. The, there are some companies that are just executing better than others, hmm. uh, and there are some that are going to lose market share. I mean, there's this industry is moving towards automation. <coughs> some in the, some companies are better prepared. Some companies are not. Mm. So IT was a mixed bag, uh, expectedly, uh, and and you know the companies that have reported so far at this point, if you look at any earning cycle, their private banks. I was expecting. I mean, one was expecting good earnings from private banks. Mm. Uh, the asset quality is not as impaired as as uh, uh, some of the others. So so far, it's also the the set of companies that have reported. I think uh, as you as you go down the earning season. Uh, you'll see some asset quality stress in banks as PSU banks start mm. reporting. I mean, they're got, it, it, the picture is going to be more mixed than... than, than so you're saying it's a function of actually who's reporting rather than the numbers themselves? Absolutely. absolutely. Also, uh, <laughs> broadly speaking, uh, the bar has been brought down consistently over the last many quarters, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, so... so you... um, uh, by the way, earnings downgrades, even I was looking over the last four weeks, mm. Uh, Nifty earnings have been downgraded 1%. Mm. So while earnings growth per se from the companies reporting so far has been okay, mm. uh, on an aggregate basis earnings are down 1%. So for example, Access Bank earnings got uh, mm. downgraded post a quarter. Mm. On an aggregate basis, Nifty is still down 1%. So mm. uh, and that basically results from the fact that, you know, when we started the year, we had very aggressive earnings, and mm. then we're just adjusting them downwards. Mm. Uh, no, this is the latest revision, which is down 1%. That's right. Nifty last expectations. Four weeks. Last four weeks, yeah. Last four weeks, okay. Uh, and for the fourth quarter, uh, or you so this, this I'm looking at FI17. It, it makes more sense to look at look FI17. 17, yeah, 17. But uh, I mean, there is a fair bit of skepticism about earnings growth. I mean, you know, 15-16 percent earnings growth expectations for 17. But that some of that skepticism might uh, go away for good or for bad. I mean, uh, if uh, fourth quarter continues to uh, come in at a better pace, right? See, here's, here's a little bit of the People problem. People want to get carried away. <laughs> no, I, let me, let me, let me sort of uh, try to explain uh, where the challenge is in the market. See, uh -huh. we start with high multiples. Mm. And this is what we discussed, I think, last time I was on your show as well. Yeah. Uh, we start with high multiples. Uh, when you start with high multiples, returns from re-rating, multiple re-rating, re you mm. cannot be high. Mm. So basically, you get returns from earnings rollover. Mm. So if you're expecting... If, if equity should give you roughly 12, 13, 14 percent return, mm. that is how much earnings growth should be delivered in rollover. So, mm. the 15, 16 percent right now that is being built into 17, 18, mm. that's par for the cross. That is what equity should return. Mm. Honestly, any downgrade from there uh, will be a disappointment for stock stock performance. Mm. Just consider the fact that you know. Uh, uh, in India, bond yields are fairly high, mm. right? So, uh, guilt, guilt delivers 7.8 percent, mm. um, and you know, even if you look at one-year performance of yields, I mean, they've they've actually given 7.8 percent government uh, mm. government long-dated bonds. Mm. Year to date, it's it's 5 percent. Mm. Uh, even from the lows, let's say equities have done really well from the lows, 7,000 to 7,800 roughly today. Mm. Uh, even bonds have given 7-8% even from the lows in February. Mm. So the point is that, you know, uh, to make decent return for equity volatility, mm. you need 12-13% return given that 8% you can get in government bonds. Mm. And, you know, th therein lies the challenge mm. that, you know, if, if at best you are expecting 13-14%, and multiples are high, mm. so only rollover will give you returns. Mm. I mean, you see more downside risk because mm. you'd rather be invested without volatility in bonds and get those certain returns. Mm. <coughs> Sorry, when you say rollovers will give you returns, you mean? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so, 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 what happens is, mm. if you, if you just mathematically look at how returns mm. will be generated, mm. uh, when when a year has passed, mm. you can either get return from multiples being higher by let's say five percent. Mm or multiples remaining the same and earnings sure. as you roll over to the next year after 12 months mm. uh, uh, being 12-13% higher. So that, that's two ways of doing it. Mm. When you start with high multiples, mm. it's tough to assume that you'll get a higher multiple going forward. Mm. So necessarily earnings have to be delivered through earnings growth. Mm. And that's why 13-14% you know, earnings growth becomes important and that, therein lies the challenge. You have, to, you have to also consider 
that FY16 and possibly first half of FY17, you have a lot of commodity benefit into companies, mm. right? While energy stocks, uh, metal stocks have depressed earnings, the, the other investable universe, you have a lot of benefit from lower commodities margin expansion, mm. which may not be delivered when you go into FY18. Mm. Mm. Uh, are there indications that uh, uh, you know the trend uh, of, uh, for earning trend growth, earning growth, is picking up, underlying? Yeah, yeah. So you're right about that. Mm. I mean, it is picking up. Uh, the point is how much of that is priced in. Mm. Uh, so by the way, <coughs> uh, when we look across the market, uh, I have been recommending investor to start looking more at cyclicals mm. because that's where you know valuation comfort is. If you look mm. at retail-oriented stocks, consumer stocks, they're extremely expensive. Mm. Very difficult to see how you'll get good returns from there, even if you get a good monsoon and, mm. and you know consumption picks up. Um, uh, one would, I mean, so value lies in stocks like ICICI Bank, while they've been more volatile. Uh, uh, if, if you do see a, some sort of, you know, let's say, uh, uh, relief on, on uh, asset quality on numbers, you will see a higher return in those, those kind of cyclicals than in, than in uh, safe consumption stocks today. Yeah. Uh, so oil, commodity, etc., I mean, everything is moving up a little bit, right? Uh, it's staying firm. At what point do you think people again start to perceive that as a bit of a problem? See, it's very uh, 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 tough to uh, take a call on that. You mm. know, when when uh, uh, let's take the example of uh, uh, iron and steel. Mm. Uh, oil oil is a slightly different dynamic, but if if you take the uh, the uh, the example of uh, iron and steel, it's very clear that you know there is some government intervention in China that is holding up uh, holding up prices because you know honestly speaking investment pace cannot keep up to mm. what it has been historically so there is there is uh, an argument that there's overcapacity in the industry in China mm. and uh, such a sharp price recovery could not have been sort of achieved without government in intervention mm. because demand honestly is difficult to sort of see a spike from here mm. Um, so government interventions typically tend to be temporary. You saw Chinese, uh, uh, you saw the Chinese government intervene in equity markets last year, and when the intervention stopped, you saw what happens. Uh, the intervention was in the form of people not being able to sell stocks, uh, the government agencies buying uh, stocks actively in the market, and when that actually intervention stops, you know what happens. So when market forces are missing, it's very tough to make short-term predictions, but long-term economics should take over. Let's assume, and I'm talking about oil for now, or if oil stays, uh, crosses 50, stays there, right? I mean, uh, settles there and stays there. What, ha will that, is that okay? Uh, people will just shrug that off and say, okay, it's 50. Yeah, so, so you know, India, India can manage that. Mm. I mean, you know, if you look at current account deficit, mm. it's a delta of 10, 15 billion dollars. Mm. We get that delta uh, annually from increase in IT services anyway. So, mm. so India on the current account basis is, is sitting pretty, and that's why you see, uh, uh, you know, so, so it's, it's a good economy to invest in. I mean, there's undeniably, I mean, one can quibble over valuations and what price you get in. Mm. But as, a, as, an, as an economy to invest in, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, so you have uh, roughly uh, balanced current accounts. So when a, when a foreign investor puts money in, mm. he can be assured that he'll be, uh, not assured, he can, he can invest with a reasonable uh, degree of confidence that when he takes out his money, mm. the rupee will not be that much lower, that it will er erode all his returns because mm. our current account seems to be in good shape. Mm. Um, so these are some very critical elements that are sort of working in India. If you've seen FDI, that has really picked up uh, uh, and, and, and in good industries, in mm. manufacturing industries. FDI in, in autos has done really well. India seems to be uh, sort of uh, converging as a, uh, as a hub for mm. small car production, which is really, really good. So, mm. you know, good things are happening in the economy, undeniably. I mean, uh, I, I think uh, oil going to 50 can be easily absorbed. Can be easily absorbed. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, let's just uh, talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the prospects for the market from here. Are you bullish? Are you cautious? Are you outright bearish? So there's, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's uh, returns from stock selection. Uh, I still maintain on an aggregate, uh, the market has a high bar. Mm. Uh, if you say 8% uh, fixed income returns plus, uh, uh, plus you know, so uh, some equity risk premium, uh, the market on an aggregate has a high bar, 12 to 13%. In the short term, maybe in a year, some bullish rally happens. You have an excellent monsoon. Investors get really, really bold up. Mm. You may get... Uh, uh, some return in the in the short term, but when you start with high multiples, uh, um, honestly, uh, aggregate market returns are difficult. Mm. There are good returns to be had from stock picking in this market, though. Mm. 
So it's possible we, I mean, the only way uh, to make 10% is to go down 10% first. <laughs> you, that's <laughs> that's yeah. what we've seen historically. Even so, so if you look at one year returns, we Nifty is down. If you look at year to date, Nifty is down. Uh, I mean, if you look at six months, Nifty is down. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, that's one way to look at it. I mean, mm. so uh, what what you're sort of implying is that it's more uh, mm. on an aggregate for the Nifty, a more a trading sort of mm. uh, trading market. Mm. But it yeah, when you start with high multiples, that's typically what happens. I mean, so so uh, mm. you know, mm. it's, 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 it's mm. not. And uh, there is no absolutely no room for m a multiple expansion. You'd, you'd say? See, see, you can't. I mean, I see. One thing you learn about equity market is there are no absolutes. Mm. So uh, one just uh, judges what can happen with a reasonable degree of probability. What should the price be depending mm. upon free cash flow and uh, mm. returns that the companies are generating? I mm. mean, I would say a multiple of 17 times on uh, on Nifty for FI 17 is adequate. Mm. Uh, so uh, I mean, tough for me to argue that it can go to 18, 19, but not to say it cannot happen. Okay, uh, so how crucial uh, are uh, monsoons? I mean, it's made out to be, uh, it is crucial, I mean, from a human social impact, etc. It is pretty uh, important. I mean, for from an economic impact perspective, also it is important. But is it do or die in that sense? Um, they are very critical, let's put it like that. So mm. the world doesn't come to an end in a single year, for mm. sure. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it'll be bad for the sentiment. Most likely, it'll be inflationary. Mm. Um, certain sta uh, uh, certain states and cities are are facing uh, facing a crisis, and mm. I don't know how that gets resolved mm. yet because water table is. Uh, gone low reservoirs are running thin. Mm. Uh, so, so yes, this human social angle is also extremely important when it comes to uh, comes to markets. Mm. So uh, the world won't end in a single year, but yeah, I mean, we'd better get rains. And uh, you'd say that uh, good rains are now in a way. I mean, I don't know how. What the what is the way to price in good rains? But they are priced in. Mughal, so stocks that? have uh, uh, so stocks have run up. Uh, uh, monsoon related stocks have run up. Tractor companies, paint companies, uh, agricultural. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but companies. some of these companies. So for example, one one stock that we've been sort of recommending it uh, a lot to investors. So, so let's say uh, Mahindra Mahindra Financial Services. Hmm. Uh, this was really, really beaten down. Mm. I mean, it's, it's gone nowhere. I mean, it's a very rural economy focused stock. Uh, it had, it had, uh, you know, fallen quite a bit. So from there, it has rallied, uh, but on a two, three, four years basis, the stock has not gone anywhere. Mm. So at two time price to book, I would still probably sort of uh, recommend investors to get in. But yeah, I mean, if if, if a monsoon disappoints and there's additional rural stress, mm. uh, you know, that stock could uh, probably stay here or not give returns from here. Eminem. Similar, similar. I mean, similar uh, sort of comments can be made about some of the stocks you're showing on the screen. Mm. Rallis mm. has had uh, suffered from two bad monsoons. Mm. Uh, if you do get a good monsoons, things will look up for these kind of stocks. Mm. Uh, so there is, I mean, a good range, there is still upside in some of these names, Mukul, you'd say? Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, definitely. Mm. I mean, so, so just because these stocks have been so beaten down, so mm. they've, they've gone up from bottoms, but yeah, I mean, so it's not like, you know, they're hitting uh, massive multi-year highs that they can't go up from here. Mm. Uh, I just want to throw a few uh, specific uh, names your way. Let's just uh, begin with uh, Axis Bank, which reported numbers, and there was a big disclosure. ICICI will report later today. Uh, what is what are how how what are you uh, telling investors? What's the right way to look at that disclosure? Uh, it's a great thing, or I mean, back to the wall. See, uh, so you, you should disclose. look at uh, you yeah. should look at these stocks in the context of my recommendation. Mm. So, uh, overall market recommendation is that if you want to pay cyclicals. Mm. Private banks is the best place to play it, and let me just explain it in a, in a, in a, in a second. Mm. Uh, so, if the investment cycle picks up, uh, you know what we see picking up are low profit uh, businesses like roads, irrigation, railways. These are not very high margin, high uh, return on capital businesses for construction companies. Mm. So, construction companies become a tougher bet, especially because some of the good ones have already run up. Mm. Uh, so, so, but but most of these will uh, one lead to some lending pickup in the economy uh, without prejudice to uh, how profitable those projects actually are, and uh, uh, it will also res result in some GDP pickup as as you get better infrastructure. Mm. So, uh, uh, the the benefit to uh, banks or uh, is is less debatable uh, mm. for any kind of any quality of infrastructure investment. Mm. So, uh, in that context, I mean, I'm, I've been recommending people that even if you want to play the investment cycle, uh, play it indirectly through private banks. Uh, you've seen actually corporate uh, uh, growth in some of the uh, private banks actually being fairly healthy, which mm. is a good sign. 
So uh, in that context, private banks, I'm generally positive. Between ICICI and Access, uh, I mean, it becomes more of a valuation play for me. Both of them have a decent sized corporate book. They have seen decent sized corporate stress. stress. Mm -hmm. ICICI Bank's valuation at roughly one time price to book for the standalone just gives me more comfort. ICICI? Yeah. Although the scale of perceived problems there is also much larger, right? As compared yeah, to Access. Yeah, but it's more than priced in, I feel. It's more than priced in. Uh, you know, but going back to that disclosure, which they said uh, that uh, new loans, uh, about 6% of the book is uh, under watch list, right? And they said some 60% of the, it could uh, slip. In, in, in two years, yeah. Yeah, in two years. So, uh, you'd, you'd go with that number, 6%? I mean, some uh, invest, uh, fund managers spoken to, well, they said, well, how do we know it's 6%? It's not more. Yeah, so, What's you know, the, the company did uh, take a cop out saying that, you know, uh, regular slippages beyond these will happen. This is just a, mm. uh, this is just a watch list that we have and mm. we'll keep on updating you on the watch list. Mm. Uh, so, yes, I mean, stress could be, could be higher. Uh, you know, when it comes to Access Bank, a little bit of an issue um, uh, there while in the overall construct of being positive private banks, a little bit of issue over there is valuation as well. Mm. So, when you have a little bit of high val uh, valuation, you've got to be a little more careful about uh, 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 potential disappointments. So that's why, you know, I just tell people play it safe, go with ICICI Bank. Uh, even if, you know, problems are higher than what you think, I mean, more is priced in than what you can even imagine. You like the uh, HDFC banks of the world as well, Mungul? Yeah, yeah, we spoke about it the last time, that's mm. slow and steady. I mean, you know, that is one stock that, you know, can actually replace a bond, replace a bond in your fund and give you equity risk premium returns without much uh, mm. headache. Mm. If you look at HDFC Bank, even uh, as, uh, you know, people debate how expensive it is, mm. uh, on a one-year basis, it's still giving you 14% return. Mm. I mean, so, so it's a stock that gives you 20% CAGR returns, roughly 17%, 18% ROE. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's a very, very well-run bank. I mean, you know, credit card business, they were nowhere, uh, uh, nowhere in that mm. business just a few years back. Mm. And now they've just built a very robust book. So, mm. uh, very, very, very well-run bank. Uh, you should just be part of any core, core portfolio in India. Mm. Uh, so, that is a top pick, right? Uh, HDFC Bank, in private bank. I would say it, uh, in the next one or two years, probably ICICI Bank will give you better returns. Better but returns. yes, as a, as, a, as a core holding, which you would probably hold for five, ten, years, I mean, I wouldn't mind having HDFC Bank just sitting there. I mean, so if ICICI can uh, uh, surprise meaningfully positively, some of the public banks can as well? Or you think that's trickier? See, the, uh, the issue uh, when it comes to public banks, while benefit from economic recovery is there, hmm. public banks uh, inherently run with much higher leverage, hmm. right? So the ability to absorb losses is that much lower without having to dilute. Uh, a bank destroys value in dilution. Mm. That is it. So okay. if if, you, if a bank can get through a cycle without dilution, it's a cyclical story. Mm. In the next earnings peak, the bank will give you good returns. So mm. if you hold it through the cycle, when the earnings peaks next time, you will make good returns. Mm. As long as you made sure that the bank doesn't dilute itself on, on at the bottom, which banks have a funny habit of doing because regulators force them to do it when equity cushion runs low. Mm. That is the risk with uh, uh, PSU banks. Uh, if, 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 if the book is worse than what investors imagine, uh, they could be forced to do an equity uh, issuance below book, which is, uh, which is actually sort of destructive for returns. Um, so, so, you know, uh, uh, why, uh, so you, while not uh, uh, knowing what the exact uh, extent of the problem is, mm. uh, you know, ICICI Bank has similar sort of, you know, by the way, ICICI standalone is, for instance, uh, trading at similar valuations as SBI. Mm. So, um, you know, and with much lower leverage. So, mm. I, 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 so that's why I'm saying when, when I have something like that available, which is at equally high beta, I don't really know, need to go down the risk curve. You know, cement companies, do uh, you like stocks? I mean, earnings have been, volume growth has been pretty decent. So, uh, I would call, I mean, honestly, uh, cement as a miss for me because uh, um, I have been, uh, this is one example where I've been sort of fixated on valuations and, mm. and stocks have given decent So, c c cement as a pack has, uh, is up actually 10% for the year. Mm. Uh, if I do uh, just nifty stocks, uh, free float market weighted, uh, they've given 10%, so good returns. Mm. Uh, valuations are aggressive, but returns have been delivered as power costs have come down. Mm. Uh, but you know, uh, so I'd probably wait for some sort of a better entry point rather than chasing stocks if you miss them. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, the metals mining are going or taking from where what what you said earlier that is as for, uh, when government support goes out, then uh, 
uh, but these uh, prices would go down, right? Prices would go south again. There is no real demand uh, support. Uh, so I am assuming that you don't have any interest there, metal mining stocks. So uh, metal mining, uh, generally, once again, these are typical trading stocks. Mm. And, you know, once again, buying them after a run-up can be dangerous. Mm. Uh, so one would tend to stay away, although uh, uh, if the government is, uh, manages to keep India isolated from the rest of the world, mm. uh, you could have some collaborative pricing in India and, and price, prices could, uh, could be kept higher mm. for, uh, than, than uh, what, uh, what is probably priced into stocks right mm. now. Mm. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, uh, there are probably, um, yeah, I mean, one can play for that a little bit and, and given the high leverage, you would even make decent returns. Mm. Uh, but honestly, if you go wrong, the downside could be equally severe. Is there a, uh, what about something like Coal India? I don't have a view on that stock. Okay. Uh, something like uh, ONGC, Oil India, upstream companies? Uh, not on that either, sorry. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it's just the consumer part, uh, Jubilant Foodworks cracked big time yesterday. Uh, there were some 3.5% equity change hands. There was reports that promoters are sold. They're down to 45%. Uh, how would you view something like that? <laughs> so Jubilant is just a, a, a horrendously expensive stock. Hmm. So, uh, you know... Uh, but as I was saying earlier, I mean, any half-decent consumer franchise uh, is expensive, right? Yeah, so therein Jubil lies the risk. Any, <laughs> any small uh, negative news flow and there you go. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you can do some math. So, I was doing a math on the stock called TTK Prestige. Mm. You know, what the stock is impounding is mm. in the next five, six years, almost every household in the country mm. uh, will be a TTK Prestige customer. Mm. I mean, these are just tough things to deliver. Mm. I mean, tough, I mean, I would rather say on the, on the verge of impossibility. Mm. So, I mean, uh, you just stay away from, I mean, is there anything you like there in that space? So, consumption, so I'm short, short pure, pure FMCG stocks. There's some good... I mean, domestic plays uh, uh, like Dower, I mean, they've, they've, they've been excellent in building brands, but honestly, none of these stocks are cheap. Jubilant has some uh, decent structural issues where, uh, you know, you can clearly say that you should be staying away from this one. Mm. Uh, the others are less clear, but they're, they are very expensive. So Why? Which, which, what are the issues? The structural? The Jubilant? Yeah, Jubilant. Um, so Jubilant, I mean, has been seeing uh, the structural de uh, declines in same store sales growth. Uh, it could be attributed to penetration. Once again, if you do the math on this stock, you can actually see that there are not that many households consuming that many pizzas as is impounding, uh, impounded in the stock price. Mm. Uh, stock, stocks trading at roughly 50 times earnings. So, you know, there's a lot of growth being impounded there and it's a high, not a very high return or a very high profitability business mm. that, you know, every dollar invested in the business gives you very, very high returns. So these kind of businesses, uh, uh, reasonable or, or uh, relatively low RO, are, uh, return on capital businesses should never trade at these multiples. Mm. So it's, 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 this, this one's a very, very clear sort of, you know. What about consumer durables? Anything there? So on the durable side, yes, autos, uh, I'd, I'd be for sort of, you know, there's some very, very good companies. If you look at Bajaj Auto, mm. uh, for instance, two-wheelers. Mm. Uh, uh, in, the, in the large cap space, two-wheelers in India are probably the most profitable business model ever. I mean, these companies earn massive return on capital. Uh, the negative working capital businesses, investment in factories is minimal. Uh, a pure brand distribution franchise businesses, so uh, and trading at 15, 16 multiples. Uh, the bet on a, the reason why I'm choosing Bajaj over Hero is because uh, Bajaj has a better bet on on going global uh, than Hero, and that is where growth is going to come from. Mm. So these are highly, highly profitable businesses. If they get the EMs right or EMs sort of stabilize a bit, you could get very decent uh, returns from a large cap stock out here. Mm. Just one last question, uh, jumping sectors to tel telecom, uh, Mukul. Uh, are things finally starting to slow down or this is, uh, you know, data is finally starting to slow down, that's my question. Uh, the, you look at the numbers, uh, only about a quarter of consumers of any of these large telecom companies use 3G, 4G services. I mean, so there is the rest of the 75% 70, which they can uh, offer these services to. So the market seems large and of course, then there are customers they can acquire, uh, not already with them. Uh, but this quarter, these quarter numbers show that uh, there is slowdown, volume slowdown. Yeah, so so partly, you know, in India, it's always been a story of affordability. While mm. the market seems very high, mm. how many people can afford uh, that level of data? So mm. a little bit, you'll see market expand as price action comes in when, mm. when you get new entrants. But, you know, the problem is your investment, it's not <coughs> like your investment in the business will go down. Mm. Uh, but, you know, uh, one will see a pricing hit as new people come in affordability gets better mm. so so it's it's a tough race between 
pricing as uh, versus uh, uh, data usage out, out here uh, in, in, a, in an industry that's very, very capital intensive. Mughal, thanks very much. Uh, we <laughs> jumped over a lot of uh, 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 loops today. Thank you for joining in. Great, great speaking with you on a variety of uh, subjects. Always interesting. Thanks. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. For being here.